Hi, I'm Grace, and today I'm going to tell you my top 10 tips for teaching in Japan. You might have watched other videos about coming to Japan and teaching English, and a lot of those are junior high school or high school based, but I'm here to tell you, you're probably going to be put in an elementary school. Yes, that's right, an elementary school. Or primary school, as we like to call it in the UK. So your expectations are maybe not going to meet your reality on what you thought teaching in Japan was going to be like. You were probably thinking, oh, I'll just be reading some passages from a textbook, making activities and worksheets now and then, marking work, probably not. It's probably going to be that you're going to have to be more active and involved and engaged. Recently, English teaching has changed a lot in Japan, and there's much more of a focus on elementary schools to have good English. This year, they've upped the hours of English even more in elementary school. So for fifth and sixth grade, that could be 70 hours or 50 hours a week of English. Previously, ALTs or assistant language teachers would teach the whole lesson to elementary school. You would not be assisting. And sometimes this still happens, even though the homeroom teacher is supposed to be the main. So if you think you're in for an easy ride, you might not get what you expect. If you're in elementary school, you'll almost definitely be teaching fifth grade, sixth grade, and possibly third and fourth, and even maybe first and second, meaning you'll be teaching very little children. Now you should be team teaching, should, but that doesn't mean you're going to be team teaching. You might still be just left in charge of the lesson. When I first arrived in Japan, I was given one elementary school, just one massive elementary school, and I did everything. And when I say everything, I mean I ate with the kids, I cleaned with the kids, I did a morning session with the kids, I taught the entire lesson, and sometimes the teacher, although this is illegal and shouldn't happen, went out and just left me to teach them on my own. And this happened more often than it should have. Previously, that was expected of me. That was the norm that the foreign teacher came in and did all the textbook and all the lessons, and that was fine. But now it might not necessarily be such a way. If they are pressuring you too much, please talk to your company, talk to your vice principal, talk to your principal. It's okay. You need to say, um, I shouldn't be doing all this work. I'm actually supposed to be an assistant here. Please make sure they're listening to you if you're doing work that you're not supposed to be doing. Hopefully this will make your life teaching a little bit easier. Tip number one, picture cards. I have this wonderful one here, snowy. Ah, it has a lovely picture and it has the word written underneath. Now, a lot of the kids, they won't know how to read or write in elementary school or even in junior high school, really. They should, but some of them are mm, not so good. Let's be honest. So you want a picture that's very clear that they can look at and hear the word and immediately understand it. So I actually found this one on a file from the textbooks, but it's very easy to make your own picture cards from Google or similar. My best tip for this one is print out your picture. Okay, you have a floppy, horrible piece of paper. Now, get a plastic sheet. You can get about 10 of these for 100 yen. That's about $1 or 80 pence in the UK. They open up like this and then, ja -jung! you have a picture card that isn't going to get destroyed. You don't want to laminate. That's a bit of a waste of time and a cost for the school and yourself. Yes, you can use the school's laminator, but it's so much easier to go, Oh, next lesson, I have to teach animals. Oh, animal card in there. Bam. The best thing about this one is I've put magnets on the back, also from the 100 yen store. Very, very cheap. Just peel them on, stick them on, and all the blackboards are magnetic. So just bam, on she goes. So you can be like, snowy, boom. And there it is on the board, ready to go. Tip number two. If you are making small cards to give to the children, you may want to laminate them. Okay, I know previously I said laminating with this, not so great, but these little cards you will want to laminate because you know why? The kids will put them in their mouths. You kind of want to be able to wipe them clean if you can, it stops them getting disgusting. If you're only using some small cards for maybe one lesson for one class, I probably wouldn't bother laminating them, but if you're going to be using them more than once, laminate them. So what you want to do is you want to make your sheet of small cards and then cut them up. And then you want to leave a little bit of space between them 
So you can get cards like this. As you can see, there's a laminating space around and it doesn't peel off. What I previously used to do is I would put the whole sheet before I cut it into the laminator and then the lamination would peel off because I wasn't a laminating pro like I am now. So that is one of my top tips if you're going to make small cards to give to the children. Tip number two within this number two is if you want to make a game where you can't see the back, put a piece of colour on the back. Yes, you can see through because the light's shining through it, but if it's on a table, the colour means you can't see through to that side. So if they have to find the textbook card, this is a textbook card, and they can't see it, great. Tip number three. Rubber bands, elastic bands, whatever you want to call them, these are pure rubber bands. Pure. Yes, this is 100 grams of rubber bands from the 100 yen store. Everything I buy is very cheap. You can do this very cheaply. You don't have to break the bank to be a teacher. But these are all really things I would recommend getting. So even if you're thinking, oh, I don't really want to use any of my own money for my teaching supplies, it's kind of worth it because in the end, you're going to use these and it's going to make your life so much better. So in the back of the children's textbooks, there's a lot of cards they can cut out. And then they cut out the cards and they lose the cards. It is my biggest pet peeve when they cut out the cards and then, oh, I'm missing two. Oh, Grace, oh, they're all falling everywhere. Give them the rubber band. They're surprisingly good with the rubber bands. You might get one child who's like, oh, I'm going to fling it at you. But mostly they won't. They're pretty good with the rubber bands. Put their cards all together like that. These are cards actually I've made, not the kids' cards themselves. But they'll keep them all like that. And then all their cards will stay together. And they don't lose them. Oh, so much better. And use them for your own cards. So you don't lose your own cards and you don't think, oh no, I'm missing February. Oh, what am I going to do? No, rubber bands, elastic bands. Tip number four, magnets. Magnets, magnets. I have so many magnets. You can use magnets for any sort of game on the blackboard. Again, these are from the 100 yen store. I've got a blue one, and I've got a purple one, and I've got green and yellow and pink, and all sorts. So all the blackboards are magnetic. You can use them for team games. So you've got team purple and you've got team blue and you can use them to keep points. If your magnets on the back of here are not strong enough, just use them to hold them up. If you've got card cards that have been given to you by your company or by the school, fantastic. Keep them up with a magnet. Keep these magnets in your bag at all times. Which brings us very nicely onto tip number five. Your bag. It is my number one thing, I should have put this as number one, to have a bag of stuff. And in your bag of stuff, you will have magnets. You will have clear files with the magnets on the back so you can quickly change. You can have small cards. And in mine, I have color cards. When in doubt, there are so many games you can do with colour cards. I have dice. Dice are fantastic. When in doubt, you can play a dice game. I have a stamp pad and stamps. If I have to check kids' work, I don't like to give them stickers because they can get very competitive when it comes to stickers. But I love to give them a stamp. I've got a load of cute stamps. These are my cat ones. And I have dog ones and all sorts. So if you need to check some written work they've done, you can just pop out a stamp and stamp it, you've seen it, good job. Of course, pens, black and red. Red for marking, black for writing in your own notebook. I have ohajiki. Ohajiki are tiny marble-like things. They're circular and they can use them to play things like bingo games with. They're actually, again, the kids are quite good with these. They might play with them a little bit, but they generally will return them to you and they don't really break, they're quite glassy, but I haven't had any terrible things happen with Ohajiki before. Ohajiki are absolutely great. Again, 100 yen store, you can buy a big bag of them, and these are great if you're in need. Next is a stopwatch. I got this for free actually in the UK, Change for Life. This is fantastic. Again, if you're in need of a game or something to do, you can get them to do relay things, like how are you relay? where they have to ask each other, how are you? How are you? I'm fine, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? I'm sleepy, how are you? All the way around and see how fast they can do it. 
or you can use it if you're timing an activity. Oh, this is a five minute activity, go. You should have a big digital TV that plugs into the computers at your schools, but you might not. I like to use my MacBook for presentations, so I always bring my MacBook cable because they do not have anything that fits into a Mac. It will all be computers. They will all be Windows based. If you have Windows based stuff yourself, great. For me, it's a Mac. That's what I like to use. So I bring my own cable in case I have a presentation or I want to show some pictures or anything like that and just whoosh, pop it in or even play music in the background. It's really nice if they're doing an activity or coming into the classroom. If you play a little like Disney music or something they know. Tip number six. Although that seemed like a lot of information about tip number five, it leads us on to tip number six, which is always have a spare activity or game written in your notebook. If you don't have your bag of stuff, if you have forgotten that you're supposed to be at work today, I don't know, what's wrong with you? Why have you forgotten you're supposed to be at work and you didn't bring your stuff? Actually, I did have one occasion where I forgot all of my things and I was running late and I just had my backpack with my purse and things in it and I thought I had all my stuff and I didn't and I just had to think on the fly. When you've taught enough, about six months in, I reckon you can make a lesson on the fly. But if you can't before that, during your training, you will be given a list of activities, of games, of things you can do. Write them down and make sure you have a game for any occasion. When in doubt, Janken games are the best. And when I say Janken, you're probably thinking, oh my God, what is a Janken? That sounds weird. Janken is rock, paper, scissors. But generally you're taught to do rock, scissors, paper, one, two, three. When in doubt, if you just do rock, scissors, paper with them, they'll be elated. Whatever you learn in your training, rock, paper, scissors is your number one go-to. If you'd like to know how to do that in Japanese, because they might want to do that with you, it's saisho gu janken hoi. Or they might just say janken poi. They might say janken poi. They might say janken hoi. If you're in Osaka, they will say saisho gu injang hoi. Injang. When I first moved to Osaka, I was like, what the hell is an injang? It just means janken, which means rock, paper, scissors. And the kids absolutely love it. They use it to decide everything, which you'll be surprised about. Tip number seven, don't assume it's okay. What are you talking about? Ah, yes, using headphones. What? Using headphones? Yes, you can't assume things are okay. I actually had a situation where I was not allowed to use my headphones in the teacher's room. I said, is it okay if I listen to these English songs on my headphones? No. All right. Okay, I was trying not to disturb everyone else by using my headphones, but no, that's not okay. It might sound really strange and quite basic, but don't assume that something that's okay in your country is okay here. But it also goes the other way around. Things that are not okay in your country might be okay here. For example, I got a massive shock on my first day when the kids said, Grace Sensei, will you pick me up? Pick you up? Pick you up, child? I can't even touch you. That's not legal. Yeah, no, it's absolutely fine. And I asked the teacher and I said, is it, is it okay? Can I touch this child? Is it okay for me to pick them up? And he was like, <laughs> yeah, why wouldn't it be? And then I explained to him that in my home country, you know, you have to ask, is it okay if I put my hand on your shoulder? And in the elementary school, the teacher was just laughing his face off that that could be any sort of rule. Be careful, ask the homeroom teacher, ask your vice principal, ask your principal, ask your supervisor, ask your company, ask whoever, but just make sure you're being a bit careful. Of course, only do these things with the children, like picking them up, if that is invited. Sadly, there have been times when the ALT has thought it's okay to sort of hug a girl or hug one of the children and they freaked out and the parents have called the school and it's been a very bad situation. So only do these touching things if they're invited by the children, of course. Tip number eight, be open to eat with the children. You might have an allergy and that's fine. In that case, don't eat with the kids at all. If this is your first time coming to Japan, eat that school lunch, it's gonna open your mind. On my first day, I remember we had this soup and it was an egg soup. It was kind of like a scrambled egg soup and I had no idea how to eat it because we didn't have a spoon, we just had chopsticks. 
So I was sort of looking around at the children, what they were doing, and it was just a drink it down situation, which is very unusual for me because that would be incredibly rude in the UK if you picked up your soup bowl and you were drinking it down. And it was the worst experience of my life because I'm not used to, if I'm drinking things, solid things going in as well. And to me, it was an experience of backwards vomit. Actually, it was really delicious, but the sensation of it was something I really had to get used to because we would drink our soups like that all the time. And you have to kind of get used to a way of eating. Although I've said it would open your mind and I've said it will be a good thing to eat with the kids, it absolutely is. They love having you there to talk to. They love your presence in the classroom if you want to be there. If you don't want to be there, it's absolutely fine. Eat in the teacher's room. It's your prerogative, what you want to do. But eating that school lunch is so healthy for you and it's a real look into what Japanese food is actually like. So you're not gonna get sushi and you're probably not gonna get tempura. You're gonna get real Japanese home cooking, kyushoku school lunch style. And sometimes it's really, really delicious. And sometimes it's backwards vomit, but that's fine. Open your mind, give it a go, and you might find some things you really like. Tip number nine, surprise suit. What? Yes, a surprise suit. You come into work, you're looking all right. You might have um, quite a casual jumper on or a shirt like this. It's cute, but it's not too casual. You've got some good trousers on, never jeans. Other teachers might wear jeans, but don't follow their ruling. Other teachers might wear jeans, but please ask if you would like to wear jeans. The vice principal is probably gonna tell you no, but ask if you want to dress more casually, because otherwise they might report to your company or your supervisor or somebody that you're not dressing appropriately, but they won't tell you to your face. That is another thing about Japanese work culture is nobody tells anything to your face. Someone will tell your supervisor who will then tell you. So going on from that, surprise suit. You come into work, you're feeling all right with what you're wearing and the vice principal goes to you, oh, oh Grace. Yes. Um, today. Okay. In my case, the vice principal, he cannot speak English very well. And this is a legitimate reenactment of something that happened. Um, Board of Education comes to see your lesson today. Um, fifth, fifth, five, five period. Okay. Um, and when the Board of Education comes, you need to be in a suit. When people are coming from outside to see your lesson, which will happen, sometimes you'll have training where other teachers come from other schools or student teachers will see your lesson. In that case, you probably need to be smart in a suit. So I look at myself in my shirt and my slightly casual trousers, not jeans though. Let's be certain, not jeans. And I'm thinking, oh no, the Board of Education is coming to see my lesson. And then I remember I have in my locker a suit. So when you start at your school, you can ask for a locker of your own, or at least a space of your own. There's usually changing rooms and they'll let you put stuff somewhere at least. If they don't, they're pretty much very, very mean and very unlikely to happen. So I have a place where I put my suit, just in case this kind of thing comes along. And the last tip, tip number 10. This is a more serious one. It's don't isolate yourself. Being the only foreign person in the school can feel very, very isolating. You can feel, oh, nobody understands what I'm saying. Unless your Japanese is very good, you might not be able to have a conversation with a lot of the teachers there, especially in elementary school where their limit is about the same as the children, sadly. So you might start feeling a little bit lonely in your working hours. One of the things you can do is reach out to local communities. If you're here with a company or here with the JET program or that kind of thing, Reach out to your fellow English teachers, have a Facebook group, go out. It's okay to be friends with other English speaking people. There's a lot of people that come to Japan and they think, oh, I'm only going to speak in Japanese to Japanese people and only make Japanese friends. Okay, that's great, fine, you do you. But for some people that's going to isolate them and put them in a very bad mental state. If you're talking with other English teachers, you're gonna get so many good ideas for your lessons as well. Join groups, 
make friends, share lesson ideas, don't let yourself be too lonely. Also, if the teachers are asking you out for a drink, they might have a nomikai, which is a drinking party, or an enkai, which is an eating, but also drinking party, then go to it. Don't be offended if you're not invited to the party. It might just mean that they don't think you really want to come or have the time or be interested. Communication is the key to a successful teaching life in Japan. Communicate with your supervisors, communicate with your company, with other English teachers. Communicate with your supervisor, with your vice principal, with your principal, with your company, with the JET program, whoever you're with. Communicate with other English teachers, communicate with random people on the street and you'll find yourself feeling so much more included, so much more wholesome and you'll get so much more out of your experience in Japan. I hope you've enjoyed my top 10 tips. I'd love to make more videos about teaching in Japan. If you're interested, comment down below and share your experiences. Good luck with your teaching experience in Japan. Saishogu, janken hoi!